Welcome to Unreal Gems. In this video, we are going to shade citrine size. For that, we are going to use parallax occlusion mapping, a technique that allows us to get depth without extra geometry. Okay, so here we are in Unreal Engine again, and this time we are going to shade citrine size. For that, we are going to use this material. You already know the base color, emissive and normal parameters, but we will go briefly over them so you can refresh all of your concepts about them. Okay, let's start with the base color, which again has a texture that gives color to the eye. This time, again, we are using a hue shift, so we can switch colors easily on the eyes. We have sampled the texture with sRGB and compression settings default. We go to hue shift, and we reuse the hue parameter between the base color in the emissive and then we connect the base color to the base color pin. The metal and roughness parameters are the same as always, they are connected to their pins and then we have the emissive which also has, as I mentioned before, the hue shift. It also samples a texture and it will reuse again the parameter from the hue shift so they change colors evenly the base color and the emissive. We have an emissive parameter that controls the intensity of the emissive texture and a power parameter that will change contrast between uh, highlights and shadows. So we can either add to the highlights or subtract from them and make it more or less contrasty. We also have the specular reflection that we added to the emissive, which is that white dot. We sample with sRGB and compression settings default, as always, for colors. This time, the normal map, again, is a simple one. It gives some texture to the eye surface. And again, it's sampled the same, but we have the flip green channel because we have OpenGL texture maps and Unreal needs DirectX ones. So let's go to the material instance and let's see how the hue affects the eye color. I'm going to start moving the slider and you can see how we are rotating over all of the possible colors. When we are done, we can keep it as is. I was trying to match the color between the gems and the eyes. That's why I chose the parameter that I did. In terms of the other parameters, like for example emissive, you are going to see that the effect is quite simple. If you go down or up, the emissive is going to be higher or lower. So we can subtract. Being zero is no emissive. One is original emissive. I thought it was way too strong, so I went down to 0.4. We can now take a look at the power. As you can see, as we switch the number higher or lower, it's going to subtract contrast or add contrast. In my case, I was trying again to match the gems so that the eyes didn't pop out more or less than the gems. And that's why I chose the parameter I did. But you can go ahead and feel free to experiment with all of this and choose whatever you want. Okay, so with this, we are done with the emissive. We can now take a look at all of the PPR parameters. So in this case, metallic and roughness. In terms of the roughness, if we go higher, it's going to make the eye more matte. And if we go lower, it's going to make it more plasticky, more polished. In our case, it can mean that other specular highlights appear and interfere with the ones that we created on the emissive. Again, this is not the proper way of creating the plasticky feel of an eye, the watery feel. We will learn later how to do it. Let's now take a look at the metallic. If we go up in the metallic, it's going to look kind of weird because an eye is not metal, so it makes no sense. But again, you can, if you increase the roughness, get some other looks that may fit what you are looking for best. 
In my case, I'm going to keep the metallic at zero and the roughness at 0 0.5 because I liked the final result that it gave. And with that, you can see that the eye looks really nice for a stylized character. And we are going to take a look now at the rest of the material. Okay, so here we are in the material again. The only thing left is the parallax occlusion mapping, which is going to help us shading the bulge that we have in real eyes. We are looking for a stylized eye, but still we are trying to get the eye as close as possible to a real eye, but with the stylized look. For that, we are going to use this technique that helps us uh, fake depth, which is called parallax occlusion mapping. That's what you see here. Looks really complex, but it is not that difficult to understand. If you are in doubt, please check out the PBR series that I have because it will explain it a lot more in depth. In our case, you can see that this technique works with the UVs. It fakes depth using the UVs for textures. That is why its output is connected to the textures, to the UV ping in the texture samplers, in the base color, the emissive and the normals. We are using a height map to drive this node. Black is going to be stay where you are, so it doesn't pop out. And white or gray is going to be pop out more or less from the surface geometry. I left white in the rest of the texture, so there was more contrast and things popped out even more. With these colors, we are going to be able to make the surface pop out or popping depending on what we want. As always, if we don't have a color, we need to uncheck sRGB and keep the compression settings at default. We are going to be able to properly sample the texture and we are going to make sure that the bulge, the iris, has gray over black in the middle of the eye and the borders to get it to pop. And as I mentioned before, then we have white to just uh, give it more contrast and make the effect even more apparent, but it is not needed. Okay, so once we know what the height map does, we also need to know what the other parameters do in the parallax occlusion mapping node. The height ratio is going to make the surface pop more or less and in or out. Min and max steps are going to dictate the quality of the algorithm. With more steps, more computation, but more quality, and with less steps, less computation and less quality. We also need to tell it where the height map channel is. In this case, all of them are equal, so we are going to use the first one, 1000, and then we have also the reference plane which is not that important. I'm using a 0.5 value, so a middle ground from the maximum and minimum popping or pop out distances. So now that we know how the material works, let's go ahead and check it out in the material instance. Since we need details to properly see how the parameters affect the eye, we are going to use the preview viewport. Here we can see how the parameters will change the bulge and the eye when we change them. Let's go ahead and start with the most obvious one, which is the max steps. Take a look at the inferior part of the eye when I turn it up to 128. The borders have a lot more precision. In this case, I'm going to go back to 32 because we are trying to get a performant character and 128 is too much for not having close-ups of the eye. You're not going to see the difference. So for the height ratio, zero is no height ratio, no parallax occlusion mapping. And if we turn it up, it's going to pop out. So positive numbers is going to make it pop out instead of popping. Negative is going to pop in, but it is making quite strange effects in the default sphere. It is quite normal. It is not prepared for that. So let's keep it at 0 0.05 for now. Let's go ahead and see how this affects the real character in our viewport. As you can see, as I turn it up or down, the eye is popping in or popping out. As you can see, it's quite exaggerated if we go really far with the parameters. But as you can see, it looks quite good with the default parameter that I used, which is 0.05. You don't want to go too far 
artifacts appear. It looks cool, it looks like it refracts, like the eye has some depth, but if you go to extreme angles, you can get artifacts and it will look really weird. So once we have that out of the way, we can go ahead and check out the reference plane, which is the only parameter left. As you can see, it just affects the reference plane from which the algorithm calculates the depth. So as you can see, it also affects the character in different ways. This is not too important. You can keep it at 0 0.5. It is going to look good in our case, so don't worry too much about the reference plane. Just play with it and see what works for you. Okay, so right now we are done with all of this. We are going to get a bonus material which is going to show how to go further with the eyes. Okay, so we have here a second version of the same shader, but we are trying to get a kind of more advanced look that is trying to imitate the crevices in the iris of a real life I. But in this case, we are trying to do it in a simple way with the parallax occlusion mapping node. We have modified the texture and we have added those crevices with black on top of the gray of the iris. With that, we get those differences in depth, but that is not all because remember that in the base color, everything is blue. So we need a similar texture, in this case with only the iris detail, so the iris mask. And with that texture, you can see that this is the same texture that we added to the depth map. But in this case, we are using it, inverting it and using it in a LERP so that we can interpolate between black and the eye color. That makes those crevices black and we look kind of similar to that effect that we were mentioning before in the real eye iris. So not only we have a general bulge, but we also have those uh, individual crevices, that detail that a real iris has, but in a more simple way, since this is a stylized character. Let's take a look now at how the material instance allows us to modify the material in the scene. Okay, so you can see that it adds small detail in the eyes. You can see those black crevices and the differences in depth. We can make them more or less apparent. As you can see, we can increase the depth or decrease it. And you can tell that we may need more detail so we can turn the max steps up to 128 to get that extra depth detail that we may need here if we have close-ups. Again, I'm going to go back down to 32 because I want a performant character. So 128 is a little expensive. So we go back to 32. And we can also take a look at another material. Remember that I told you before that the eye had a kind of watery look and we are trying to get that look with this material. As you can see, it is quite a simple material. We just have a base color, which is quite normal to tint however we want. Then we have the metallic specular and roughness parameters, all of them connected to their corresponding pins. Next, we have the transparency layer with opacity and refraction, which is going to be driven by a Fresnel node that is going to control the change in refraction depending on the angle to the camera. Then we just need to connect the output of said LERP to the refraction pin, and that's pretty much it for this material. One more thing, we need to select the correct blend mode since this is a translucent material and the lighting mode, which is surface forward shading. A warning note is that surface forward shading is expensive, so if you want a cheaper material, use surface translucency volume. That is going to make it uh, quite more performant. Once we have seen all of this, let's go ahead and take a look at our material instance as always and how it affects the character. I have already added the material to the eyes. As you can see, 
we already can tell that there are reflections from the environment, the cornea of the eye, which is the watery surface over the iris. And as you can see, we can switch the different parameters and get different looks. If we want more clear reflections, we can go up to a metallic of one. I don't like that look, it's too extreme, so I went back to what I had. You can turn up the roughness if you don't like uh, clear reflections and perfect reflections, you can make them rougher. In terms of the specular, you can modulate the specular highlights so we can go lower or higher, so they are more or less apparent. And again, I'm going to specular of one because I want that pop in the cornea of the eye. We can also switch opacity. If you go too high, it's going to look weird. So you want to keep it low, but high enough so that you can see those specular highlights and those reflections. And last but not least, we have the refraction parameter. If you go too high with this, it's going to look really, really weird. So you can go ahead and keep it low so that the character does not look weird. So with this simple material you can see how we can get dynamic specular highlights and reflections from the environment and not only rely on the specular highlight from the emissive channel. Well, so that has been it for this video. As you can see, the shader is simpler than it looks. Once you understand parallax occlusion mapping, the rest is a piece of cake. If you found the video helpful, go ahead, like and subscribe. We'll see each other in the next videos of the PBR shading series.